What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the prediction show for Survivor Series. I'm Robbie Miles. I'm TJT. And we're here to give predictions. Yeah. Um, this <laughs> as simple as that. We're here to sit down and pretty much dissect the, what we think is going to happen here at Survivor Series, uh, whether it helps, you know, that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to give our predict predictions, what we think of the matches, where we think things might go after the match, what's going to happen during the match, um, if we feel any special appearances will happen, any of those kind of things. So, um, I think we, yeah, I think I covered everything. Is there anything else we're going to cover today? <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get right into what's probably going to be the first match because there hasn't been an announced kickoff match. No, yeah, which no. is weird. Which uh, only mean to me only means that something like last minute will come. Like, oh, let's let's put um. Uh, what? Let's put Rusev. Some, yeah, let's put Rusev. Let's put since we just stole this opportunity from Sami Zayn, let's put him in a pre, you know, kickoff show instead, something like that. So right. Which of course I have maybe minded. Darren Young because they completely forgot about his push. Well, you know. <laughs> oh no, they don't. They never, <laughs> they never forget a push. Um, ever. Oh never. Never. never, never, never not WWE. Never. Mm. But we are going to get started with one of the matches, which is our Cruiserweight match for the Cruiserweight title. It will be the Brian Kendrick, the Cruiserweight champion versus Kalisto. With the added stipulation, if Kalisto wins, then the entire Cruiserweight division gets transferred to SmackDown. Which I thought was a very big, like, whoa, that's kind of big, because yeah. I think one of the things that's been helping Raw is the idea that they have this Cruiserweight division. And they've been doing such a good job with it. Uh, so when the stipulation got put and agreed on, I was like... <laughs> Whoa! Do you not agree that this? <laughs> um, basically, when I heard the cruiserweights were gonna come back to Raw, uh, I thought, great! It kind of makes more sense for them to go to SmackDown, but also great because Raw has three hours uh, now with the roster being cut in half for basically both shows or two thirds, as we eventually found out. Huh. Um, but, you know, you got to find something to fill that three hours. So I was like, okay, great. So that means cruiserweights are going to basically take up, like, the equivalent of an hour out of that three hours. Didn't work out that way. Um, I feel, honestly, like sometimes the cruiserweight division gets kind of forgotten until, like, last minute. They're like, oh, yeah, we need a cruiserweight thing. Um, well, I th and I, I kind of feel that way, too. But I think what I do enjoy is that it, I don't always feel that they're forgotten. I just feel that they are their own. It's very obvious that they're their own thing on Raw. Like, they're separated. Like, they're not, which I do have a, a bit of a problem with. But at least I know that when I watch the Cruiserweight, there is some small storylines. There are some wrestlers getting um, pushed a little in the Cruiserweight division. Mm -hmm. And I think, that's, I think that's what I like about it. Um, I do like that attention that it's getting. Uh, it does give like a small taste of what it used to be, especially back in WCW, yeah. before you know WWE kind of made a huge joke about it. But like, it's I think it's the baby steps. But when it comes to this match, and when it comes to who's gonna win, I for our, like first prediction, pretty much, um, I think I'm gonna go with Kalisto. Mm -hmm. I think it just it makes more sense if. On a realistic term, like on a like, let's be let's look at this honestly. With the new with uh, 205 coming out mm -hmm. right after SmackDown, the easiest thing is to move the cruiserweights to SmackDown. That way, they're not wrestling on Raw and probably a town here, and then going 12 <laughs> hours somewhere else just to wrestle for this one hour. It'll be easier to go, you know, oh, here let's wrestle here on SmackDown, or let's go. I'm gonna wrestle you tonight. On 205, you know, so make sure you turn, you know, turn to the camera, like, make sure you, you know, <laughs> watch 205 tonight. Have, so, they, have they really done the, um, you know, Smackdowns here and Raw's way over here? They, they have, they have, it's like some, they may not be all the way, but okay. like, for, well, like for an example, like they're coming to Chicago soon, which I would like to go to that show, but while the Raw shows in Chicago, the Smackdown live roster is in New York. And then the very next day, the SmackDown roster comes to um, Chicago. Chicago. But I think the Raw roster goes. Um, to so like they travel Louis. to the same place, but just on different days. Yeah, somewhat. I yeah. think I think the SmackDown thing. This is just an exclusive one for this um, for Smack for Chicago. I don't know if any other 
cities do that. Correct us if we're wrong. Um, but I think that's one of I think that's one of the things they do. So I think just that alone, it would be easier for the cruiserweights to stay on SmackDown so they mm -hmm. could just make one full show. And then I think it would kind of solve the problem that you have. You talk about how there it should be like this one hour that's guaranteed for the cruiserweights. Now they're gonna get a little more than an hour now because they have not only two or five, but probably the extra what ten to twenty minutes in the show that's given to go cruiserweights. Yeah. And I th I would I wonder now what superstars that they find big now that they can put in the cruiserweight division now. You know, like now that they are putting Kalisto in cruiserweight, it goes like, okay, great. You know, um, so who else in the our main roster that we've had for years who meets that two hundred five requirement? Surprisingly, and we could put them as a cruiserweight. <coughs> Neville. <coughs> yeah, but Neville. <coughs> Neville. if they could tra they could transfer Neville to you know from Raw to SmackDown, you know another wrestler who that push. That never comes. Um, There's your pre-show match right there, Neville versus Rusev. I would watch that. I would watch that. I would watch that. That's a good match. Um, That's a feud. Did we ever even get that feud for the U.S. title? I don't think we did. No, I think Neville started. That was Kalisto. No, we never got We never got Neville versus Rusev. Mm -mm. That would have been a great because feud. Because I, I think Rusev is the one that beat. Yes, Rusev beat Kalisto for the title. Right. So um, The second time around. Yeah, and even they had... They had some pretty good matches. I was pretty impressed by those. Um, yeah. It was nice. It was a, a nice refresher from watching Kalisto and Ryback numerous times. Um, and Ooh. thank God he's gone. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, as for as for my prediction for the match now, uh, what I used to do when I used to do these as strictly like audio podcasts is I would always inevitably go, "This is what I want to happen." This is what I think actually will happen mm -hmm. because unfortunately, uh, I like many. I, like many WWE fans, hardcore fans, think that I can book the show better. But for this match, it really is a, it really is a sense of, I want one thing to happen, but I just don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. I agree with you that I want Kalisto to take the Cruiserweight division to SmackDown. I think SmackDown would handle them better. I think, more importantly, because we mentioned that they're separate right now, I think... Moving them to SmackDown would inevitably have them blend into the regular roster. And I actually think that helps the Cruiserweight division because then they get to rub elbows with people like Dean Ambrose, with people like AJ Styles. Whenever Cena's here, John Cena. Uh, well, I mean, to be honest, um, that's what I want to happen. What I think will happen, and there are a few reasons why, is I think Brian Kendrick's going to win. I think the Cruiserweight division is going to stay on Raw. And it's from just basic, like, boo! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's like, I can't let go of the wrestling logic in the fact that Kalisto has zero momentum heading into this match. I mean, and you can argue that, you know, maybe Brian Kendrick doesn't have all the momentum in the world, but we've seen him on TV... You know, every week, we've seen him every Raw. We just saw him win the thing. He hasn't had a rematch with TJ Perkins yet. Rich Swan has racked up victories against him. Now, you know, they tried to work in a, an additional thing with Sin Cara um, trying to, like, stick up for his buddy Kalisto. You know, the point is that when Brian Kendrick is champion, there's a lot of people right now that are gunning for him, and that's exciting. And that's important, and he has a lot of momentum. Kalisto is kind of basically just coming up right the heck out of nowhere and going, oh, I'm going to take your title. I feel like it's not, it's not, it's not the right time to take the... It, it's not the right time to take the strap off him and put it on Kalisto. Okay. I think if they want to take the strap off him and put it back on TJ Perkins, that's another thing. But, I mean, clearly they took it off him for some reason. Maybe that reason's still true. Maybe that reason changes, whatever. But uh, for my actual prediction, though I really want Kalisto to win, I'm going to have to go with Brian Kendrick. Okay, cool. So we want to go on now to the next match uh, for the Intercontinental title, which would be The Miz. <laughs> the Miz. <laughs> which... We can't have anything nice. Which is a, one, a complete 180, because... <laughs> God knows that if there was any matchup that I was ex truly excited for for Survivor Series, it was Dolph Ziggler versus Sami Zayn. But I guess we have to stick 
with um, the this Miz. This is why WWE <laughs> fans think they can book the shows the better. The Miz. <laughs> who we gonna have the Miz versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental title. Would it have been better, in your opinion, had their match at SmackDown 900 ended ambiguously, leading to a triple threat? I would have preferred that. I would have loved that. It would have been more. That would have been more exciting, and it would have. But you know, iffy about it because I feel that because of who the Miz is and the numerous of matches we've seen him in that involve more than two him and another wrestler. There, WWE will find a way for him to slip in and sneak the win at Survivor Series. To and be honest, I actually wouldn't have a problem with that. Again, it goes back to the multi-man. Like, they try to communicate. They really should hype up that aspect of multi-man matches. Yeah. That really, anything can happen. Like, anything really can happen. Uh, and I think too many times we've... Well, but that, that kind of works in its favor that a lot of times in multi-man matches, the championship... The champion retains. So now whenever the champion doesn't, it's a bigger deal. Um, but I wouldn't mind having Miz just... Like, why not? Why not just wait to give Miz the championship back at Survivor Series? It's a bigger deal. Um, but then, you know, if they want to give it to Sammy, then that... It just adds a little bit more intrigue, I guess. It adds another little variable into it. Yeah. Well, I... I but when coming to this match, mm -hmm. um, I know... The big talk right now is that you know they're moving. They're talking about moving Sammy to SmackDown, and this being the introduction to doing so. I honestly, though, though that I feel that's going to happen, I still think the Miz is going to walk out champion, mainly because I don't. I think it would be. I don't know if they would. How how weird it would seem for Sammy to win and then come Raw and then go. I'm actually going to SmackDown. It's. I think if the Miz. When to then go, Sammy goes, I'm going to go to SmackDown um, to go for that title now, kind of deal. Like, to build that up as a storyline. Mm -hmm. Then I think that would be a more real... That would be that would be part of the better booking that I think that I could do over WWE. Um, having The Miz walk out as champion. Um, that way, Sammy can then... That way, it would be easier... When Sammy does go to SmackDown, we already know that, okay, he's going to go for the Intercontinental title. It would be... He already has a story. He already has a focus. Whether that involves him and Dolph and The Miz, um, it's already there. It's already focused. But if he goes in as the champion, um, I mean, it could it could be a good thing too. You know, if he goes in as the champion, then if he does switch to SmackDown, um, it could be you know some good things can still happen from there. But I think storyline wise, uh, I think The Miz will walk out of here as champion um, and just. Just of all the things that they've already given to the Miz, uh, because they for some reason think he's uh, the greatest thing to bless that or the bless that. To be that fair, ring. the Miz is very talented. I give yes, he's very talented, but I think it's um, it's like when they continuously tell us that you know when they try to continuously push Roman in our face. I feel like they in a way try to do that with the Miz of pushing like he's the bad guy, he's the bad guy. We're like we get it, we get it, he's the bad guy. <laughs> We doesn't have to like you don't have to always push it at us, you know, like Um for my as far as my prediction, the reason that the whole giving the Miz the title back on SmackDown nine hundred was so weird for me is because I am like ninety percent sure that Sam is gonna win that title. Mm. And what you wanna do with it at, what you wanna do with that story afterwards is, you know, up for debate. Uh personally, I think I think they've kind of done this on purpose. I think they've kind of planted these seeds. And maybe this is me giving WWE way too much credit. But you notice how the two people in this match are thorns in both of their uh, manager, commissioner's sides. Sure. So I could see, no matter who wins, probably Sammy, um... There's a trade that either like went on, like probably went on before the match even started, and so it's like, oh, Sammy wins. He's bringing it to Raw. Nope, he's been traded. And then Stephanie goes, damn it. Right. <laughs> I only, but the only thing I think the difference between those thorns, like you're saying, is that I mm -hmm. think, um, I think Sam. The reason why Sammy, I don't know. If, I think Sammy go to SmackDown. I don't know if Miz will go to Raw because I think the Miz is thorn. Against um, Daniel Bryan, it's like leading to something is a bit strong, is much stronger 
than Sami Storm against Stephanie because Stephanie. No, absolutely. Because I think you know after I think after uh, Survivor Series, I think you know Stephanie would go back to go you know whoever her main focus was, which was Seth at the time. She'll go back to going. You're I. You're my enemy. So we're here on our so we're here to move to our next matchup, which we finally get to touch on one of the three big Survivor Series traditional matches. Yes. Um, and we start with the first Team Raw versus Team SmackDown matches, which is the tag teams all coming together. We have the New Day, um, Sheamus and Cesaro, Luke uh, Gallows, Carl Anderson, Enzo Amore and Big Cass, and the Shining Stars representing Team Raw going against Team SmackDown. The tag team champions, Heath Slater and Rhino, the Hype Bros, American Alpha, the Usos, and Breezango. Breezango. Breez <laughs> that was the whole crux of his feud with Jericho. With who? <laughs> Jericho! <laughs> Unmemorable. Drink it in, man. The un. The un <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm just saying, the most ridiculous feud to have um, Fandango beat Jericho at WrestleMania, but have Jericho beat AJ Styles at WrestleMania. It's WWE at their, at their finest, is what I'll call it. But we're not talking it's about... It's like the definition of a stopped push. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not talk Ooh. we're not talking about WrestleMania and the good and bad. We can talk about that later on in our life. Oh. <laughs> Tonight, one of the things I was... Um, talking to TJT about earlier, was the difference between Raw and SmackDown in general. Mm -hmm. And I talked about how, in my opinion, no matter what they, what WWE tries to do, they continuously show that Raw is the flagship show and is since the better show than SmackDown. So I always feel that there are, are always issues, you know, of going like, of how SmackDown can get a good push to show that they are the better show than Raw. And I think this pay-per-view is a perfect example to start showing like, okay, SmackDown has some quality talent. Um, but this is one of the matches where I get iffy about because I think while SmackDown, you know, has some really good wrestlers in general, when it comes to these tag teams, I think Raw kind of is dominant on on that side or they just have some really strong tag teams to go raw with. has the more interesting interesting tag teams in terms of characters i could say that yes it's just or something where but except for sheamus and cesaro but what looks like majority and new day i guess but it looks like majority of these teams are like we started here as a team like when we came to this company we we're a team where i feel like the others uh okay I said so other show except for you know probably Usos, um, the Usos and American Alpha. Somewhat because I still remember NXT they were separate and they came together and I understand that happens a lot. I understand you know that people are separate and you know they come and create this great tag team. But there are so many. But I feel Raw has so many more people that was like we started as a tag team and we're still here as a tag team um, because I know the Hype Bros, Zack Ryder came and Mojo came then they came together. Um, Amer same thing for American Alpha, same thing for um, Brizongo, same thing for uh, Heath Slater and Rhino. It just felt, it just feel like it's that's a, supremely yeah. It's like still to this day, you know, like whoa, one one minute I'm looking, you know, I'm thinking about voting for Rhino for state representative, and then in Michigan, then <laughs> then the next day, like oh, you're a tag team champion. Okay, great. Uh -huh. So I don't know. I'm this is a time where. I, like as much as I want SmackDown to dominate or SmackDown to show that they're the best, like as good of a brand at least, or better than Raw, I think Raw dominates here with the tag teams, and I think Raw is going to, uh, I think Raw is going to take this matchup with them uh, for the win. Mm -hmm. So, Team Raw. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting. It's interesting uh, the way that you see the way that you see the way that Survivor Series because of our prior conversation before this recording, uh, the way you want Survivor Series to play out and your pick with the tag teams is like basically the counter to mine because <laughs> I actually have Team SmackDown winning the tag team one, um, which I think will be uh, essential. 
because this is, in my opinion, this is really the one where it's like, Raw actually does kind of have the more interesting tag team division. It has um, a little bit more oomph, more star power to their tag team division. I feel like I feel like SmackDown Live. When you look at you know the main event scene, uh, the women's division, the tag team division, the mid car scene on SmackDown, the tag teams actually get the sh they get the shaft. Um, not that there hasn't been compelling stories with the tag team division. The Usos have basically single-handedly taken that tag team division and been like, oh yeah, we got something to go with now. But I think in terms of the show, like it's important that Team SmackDown wins the tag team one because that kind of is something that says like, no, believe in SmackDown, watch SmackDown. Like, it gives SmackDown a little bit more momentum because this really is an area where SmackDown is a little bit not as good as Raw in, is the tag team division. Not to say that they don't have good teams. That's not what I'm saying. Because the poor VOD villains. It's a shame. Um, it's a shame. Um, they brought back the headbangers. Yeah, I'm like, that's a <laughs> desperate time called for desperate measures. That just shows you how desperate their tag team division is. They brought back the headbangers. Like, what? Like, the kids who watch wrestling now are like, the headbangers. Like, literally, like, just a couple months ago, the headbangers was in my hometown at some independent uh, production, uh, promotion, you know? And it's like, now, now you guys are bringing them back, but it's not even, it's not even the... We're bringing them back to make the headbangers great again. No! They're making the headbangers just the obvious squash of like, we need some tag teams and we just can't keep forming people. Like, at least with the Dudley boys, it's like they went on a little bit of a hot streak before yeah. they started becoming glorified jobbers. Yeah, just like, just like, uh, uh, I don't know. I like, because I, I agree. I feel that SmackDown needs to show that they have a good ta like, tag team division there. And mm -hmm. I think. One of the things I could give SmackDown more props on is that when I see in their shows, their all Smack their tag team division was always a very important aspect, you know. And not saying that Raw never thought it's, did that. I just felt I, like, I kind of see where you're going yeah, because just, it's like the Raw tag team division is basically the new day. Yeah, it's like it's going like they have these great tag teams, but it's it's new day or no day. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's that should like, be the once they go heel, which there's teasing a little bit. Of course there's teasing. They were once upon a time they were heel before we all said we love them actually. You know, it's just And also, you know, this ha this kinda has to happen because if you remember Punk's four hundred thirty four day title reign, he had to turn halfway through now it was because of the rock. But at the same time, it gave him a little boost. To just like, okay, so it doesn't go stale. Yeah. Like, the New Day is probably going to break 450. Oh, I'm sure they will. They're probably they're probably going to keep those titles till WrestleMania. Yeah, I think... I can agree with that. Yeah, because like, right now there's just I think, nobody. I, would say, I, think right now, I think the latest will be WrestleMania. And I think... Yeah. Um, who... That, that's the best thing about what I do like about Raw is that we could sit and make a list of going like, oh, it could be any of these tag teams that can defeat them. Um, like Except the Shining Stars. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I, would rather, I would rather have the Golden Truth uh, before the Shining Stars. They are done. It's over WWE. Like, just le let them go. Let them go. Um, but that's how I feel. I feel, um, I feel, I feel, once again, we differ, we differ in opinions again, where I feel that while well, we walk away, um, we walk away with uh, the win. We have Smack. We have TJT taking a SmackDown walk away, <laughs> and we'll find out. But God, just, just I think after this, I think the shining stars. Are, <laughs> they have, they have to go. They have to go. We, the shining stars, have to go. It ends today. It ends on. It ends, ends in a new day. <laughs> Like, I wonder ends. if we're gonna. I wonder hey, you know what? I hope SmackDown wins now, and then Stephanie goes. One of the Raw SmackDown teams is gonna get fired, and I hope it's the Shining Stars. That's what I would like. <laughs> That's what I would like to happen. She just 
She's Which just I, like, well, I need to blame one of you. I need to blame one of you. And so, and then they have a tournament, and then they realize that the Shining Star just just must end. They just must come to an end. Um, you know what? I actually wouldn't mind that proposition. Like a variation on that. No, that's a, but seriously. That's the only reason I want SmackDown to win. So shine, if it means the Shining Stars will go, then <laughs> God damn it, I'm done. I'm so good for it. I'm so behind it. I'm so behind it. Like seriously, like <laughs> Steph was like promising that there would be like consequences if they don't win. Like I would actually be curious to see what those consequences are. I want Maybe see it's that, you know, now there's a battle royal or there's like a huge like four way, five way, ten no. way match, I love and like it. whoever loses is gone. I would love a battle royal for every raw roster, <laughs> and everyone gets eliminated. It's fire. <laughs> and only one person is left on the raw. Roman so Reigns. Puts, oh god. <laughs> it's gotta look strong, damn oh, it. God, no. It's gotta look strong. <laughs> <laughs> Vince with his arms. <laughs> Just play that. Play that game. My neck. Play oh. that gif of Vince and Stacey Keebler. God. Where he's like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but moving from our tag team to our lovely divas. No. Uh, our women's. Thank you. Our women's <laughs> division. Uh, it's, it's a... It's, it, you know, I'm glad that WWE has finally made that change. Thank God. Um, mm. To finally realize that the attitude era is over, and that we um, that then that the women aren't there anymore to just you know, um, to just be eye candy. Um, do I miss well a, some? Do I do I miss a good um, mud mud bath um, <laughs> wrestling match, a good bra and panties match? Yes, I do. But I understand the. You do. The, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always saw this. I was just like, I'm not watching. This is I mean, so cringy. okay, tell you what. What I enjoy, if I could see a match that I want to watch, if I want to watch any of those Divas matches, it is so I can hear Jerry the King Lion. Yeah, every time. That's, Bobby. I think, like, I think. Sexy. I think. But thank you know for the PG era. We will probably never see those matches again. Um, sound like something TNA will probably bring back. Um, it's I mean, they're literally called TNA. <laughs> Uh, so for Team Raw, we have Charlotte Flair, the Raw Women's Champion. I, I'm i going to talk a little bit about something after this. Uh, the Raw Women's Champion, uh, champion uh, Bailey, Nia Jax, Alicia Fox, and Sasha Banks with Dana Brooke. Uh, versus Team SmackDown, Nikki Bella, Becky Lynch, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, Naomi with Natalia in their corner. And uh, now there's two things I need to talk about. Oh. One... <laughs> One, everyone jumped on, jumped down WWE's throats for the laziness of the belts when they saw the Universal title. And they're like, really? You just made a WWE World title and had it, like, colored it red? Like, really? My thing, my breaking Fruit point... <laughs> my, my... More like a uh, Fruit Roll-Up. Mm. <laughs> Not a Fruit Roll-Up. Twizzler! <laughs> that was... I was, I was so proud. I was one of the first people, because I was live tweet. Sm SummerSlam was the first WWE pay-per-view I watched from beginning to end and live tweeted. And when I saw that thing, the first thing I said, the Universal title brought to you by Twizzlers. And I was the first one. I was so proud. TJT got it, everyone. Yes. Um, but my breaking point came when... You know, obviously we had a women's division here and a women's division here, and we had one title, and we're going to get a new title. So their solution was just to go, uh, they're the Raw champion, they're the SmackDown champion. I'm like, you couldn't come up just with another name. Like, it's not the Raw WWE World Championship. It's not the SmackDown WWE World Championship. It's the World Championship and the Universal Championship. They're different things. Why can't we have that for the women's division? It's so lazy. Well, technically they did once upon a time. It was called the Divas Champion. And they had to cut that, you know? So it's like, it's because I see that too, but I, I think it's weird I'm going like, what... What we're we gonna call the new SmackDown title, the, the women, the women's Universal Championship, or look, I don't <laughs> know. That's why they pay these people. I don't know. 
If I were to come up with everything, I would just start demanding checks from WWE. Just like Adam Blompe from w What Culture WWE. That's true. Um, <laughs> but, my, and my other thing is a thing that everyone has said something about, and I'm going to say it here. I'm going to pile on. Why the hell is Nikki Bella the captain of the SmackDown women's team? Talk about... Why? Talk, talk about um, showing that... Talk about WWE once again proving that a title means nothing. Um, but also is, just the blatant favoritism of Nikki Bella because she's dating John Cena. Who is not going to be at this um at this pay-per-view once again. Like, uh, we don't know. I kn we don't know. Yes, because Cena could show up to um no mercy. <laughs> but he can't No mercy. Like but he can't he can't no um show up to and perf and perform at Survivor Series like He's busy on. filming. Oh. Probably. Oh God, I'm sorry. But also, what a hypocrite! In my but opinion. Al no, um, I but say, also, hypocrite. Santa, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> He's a phony. He's a big fat phony. <laughs> like you can't sit and tell you know. <laughs> you can't sit and be like you know Rock. The Rock left us. Like what? What do you think you're doing right now? What? Just because when you when you're done filming, you come back? I mean, no. You're a hypocrite. <laughs> You're doing exactly what you say you didn't like The Rock to do. You are a hypocrite, Santa. You're a hypocrite. I'm a fan of you in the rain, but you are a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite. Hip hop. Hip hop hop. A hip hop hop a hypocrite. A hypocrite. Hip hop a hypocrite. A hypocrite. And I feel like because you're not here, that's why they're pushing Give me good friendship. That's why you're that's why they're pushing your girlfriend that you never want to marry. So there I said it, okay? So I just think that it's ridiculous. I do agree. I do agree that it's it's all think about Becky Lynch. Think about what that says to Becky, Becky Lynch. That, uh, Becky, you're not. What the hell? You're not. Whatever, Becky. Um. Regardless, uh, my prediction is pretty straightforward. I think the Raw, Raw's, Raw team's gonna win. That. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, this is a this is the fourth. There was the fourth matchup, and we once again we disagreed. Maybe there, maybe like we said, maybe there's one. <laughs> Oh, I know there's going to be a but, but, <laughs> but let's get to um, our uh, our next traditional Survivor Series The match, final. The final one, which will be our our leading our leading men, our leading players. Um, it will be Team Raw, uh, WWE Universal Champion, Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho, United States Champion, Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, and Seth Rollins will be going against Team SmackDown's WWE Champion AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, and here comes the money, Shane McMahon. With, with for some <laughs> reason, <laughs> with James Ellsworth. I'm as so over it. On their side, I am checked out of that one. I'm um, so over it. Um, I I was watching the talk that they had after Raw um, with the commissioners and the. I actually didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, they were like they were like all talking and whatnot, and one of the things that Mick Foley brought up, which I agree with, and I I'm sure this is up for debate too. I was a little upset of how Shane, how they said, "Hey, we're gonna have Shane as the fifth man in this matchup instead," and I just feel that there are so many other wrestlers that Kane. took that spot. Um, Paul Cruz, Dolph Ziggler. I was literally gonna say. If you're going to steal Dolph Ziggler from a title opportunity, at least have him show that he's one of the leading men, you know, to lead this company, you know. But I just, um, but this is a time again where I go um, for Team SmackDown. Um, I just, I feel, I feel that they have, I feel that they have a great roster of wrestlers. Um, and these, and the four I, uh, Shane, I guess, but the four other men that's in this team, it's like, holy shit! Like they're on. This is a great team when you look at it. You know, AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton. This is a great team, and I think that's why they sh like not. They should win because yes, I, they should win because they should show that it, it'll give everyone the reminder that there's the SmackDown, there's a SmackDown roster that actually has good talent. We're not just the B show anymore. Um, we're not the second show. We are competing against. We're competing against the other show. We really are, and we. And here's proof. Here's the proof that we have it. We have the wrestlers that can do it, and I think that's why. 
SmackDown needs to win. I think so many rivalries could start out of this. Like, in my opinion, with SmackDown winning, I think Dean Ambrose should be the man that takes the final pin to win. That All that does is build up the rivalry between him and AJ Styles at TLC more. Dean Ambrose easily going, see, I made the win for the team. That's why I should be champion to lead our show. I totally get that. And that's why I think Team SmackDown should win. And Team Raw, losing easy, easy um, other rivalries that could start. This is this is an easy Roman versus Braun uh, for the title rivalry that's starting. This is um, this is what as much as we love them as a team, this would be a possible breaking off of Jericho and KO. This I don't is, even think it's possible. I think that's de this is definitely going down. Yeah, it's like it's just so many it's so many things. You know, Seth continuing his um, dispute and uh, not being on the same page as Stephanie. It's like there's so many things that can happen from this. Um, especially with Stephanie saying there are these consequences or whatever. Consequences. Uh, it's so it's so easy to do that, and I it's think it's gonna be hell to me. And like I don't, I think you know, it's like I don't know what I don't know what the Undertaker gonna do, and you know, Undertaker's you know there's consequences or whatever. Like I don't think Taker's gonna do much, but like Stephanie could do some stuff. That make it, <laughs> I think Stephanie. I think Raw losing. I think some of the big things about pay-per-views I think that we that I think WWE forgets is that it has to the show has to end to where we want to watch Raw and or SmackDown SmackDown the next day. And I think that's one of the reasons in my opinion why WrestleMania 17 is one of the is why people why some people say it's one of the best WrestleManias because the way it ended it ended with uh, as much as much as everyone. We all hated that tone, Stone Cold turned heel, all that stuff afterwards. That's fine. But that day of WrestleMania, we sat and we thought, Austin, why would you do that? And we knew that on Raw the next day that he was gonna give us an answer. And like I said, we or did not or not. You know, like it would have made us go like, we want to see that WrestleMania 31 when Seth Rollins cashed in last minute. It was like, oh my gosh, I want to see Raw the next day to see what happened. And I think. Survivor Series has the potential of doing that. With a lot of these matches, they have the potential of going, what's going to happen on Raw or SmackDown after Survivor Series? And that's if they play their cards right. Because they could also screw it up like they did WrestleMania 32 and just go like, I kind of gave up. You know? Because <laughs> like, God knows that I wasn't trying to watch Raw the next day after WrestleMania 32. But I know that Survivor Series has the potential of ending... Especially with this match, has potential of ending to go. Man, I can't wait to watch Raw and SmackDown. Um, so that's why I think SmackDown should win. I think SmackDown still has the potential of of this whole question of. I mean, even in this match, this would be a good. What's going on with Bray and Randy kind of deal, um, and it, 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 so many great things can happen out of this. So I think I'm gonna go with um, SmackDown for this for this matchup here. Uh, and, of course, <laughs> following our theme, <laughs> I'm going to go with Team Raw, but actually, now that I've thought about it more, because I'm thinking of it now in terms of structuring a pay-per-view, especially a pay-per-view like this, I have to go back and change, uh, because of what I'm about to say right now, I have to go back and change my Brian Kendrick Kalisto prediction to Kalisto. I have... I just, no, nah, it's like, I have to kind of do that because I'm going to go with Team Raw winning the whole thing. But I feel like in order to kind of weirdly justify this, you got to give SmackDown something big, which would be the Cruiserweight division. So I'm going to go and change that back to Kalisto. And I really honestly just hope, I'm not really thrilled about Kalisto winning. But I kind of just want SmackDown to have the Cruiserweights because I think they do them better. But I'm going with Team Raw, not because I think they're the better team. I'm going with Team Raw just because, you know, I don't, I honestly don't think SmackDown is the one that needs the boost in terms of the eyes of the fans. Um, back in 2000. Five or six, the one where Randy won the whole thing, uh, and Undertaker returned that one. Uh, SmackDown actually really needed to win that one because they were solidifying that SmackDown was on the same level as Raw. I think with this one, there's so much new with SmackDown Live now that you know it's a new day of the week. 
it's live, it's Shane's back, it's Daniel's back, it's, you know, AJ Styles' is champion, everyone is kind of universally going, you know, SmackDown is the better writers, uh, they have arguably the better, more cohesive, uh, focused uh, main event scene, they have a far better mid-card scene, they maybe struggle a little bit with their tag team division, they maybe struggle a little bit with their women's division, but even when they're struggling, they're still very even with Raw in both of those divisions. So I feel like right now, in the, term, in, I, in the eyes of the fans, SmackDown Live is winning. And that was made abundantly clear on this past Monday when Daniel and Shane came to Raw and people at Raw who bought tickets to Raw were cheering for SmackDown. Okay, but you have to... <laughs> but you have to see... But, you, but who's on Team Raw? Like, you, Team Raw is heels, Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho. But they for, cheer. For, they cheer them. Fourth face, <laughs> Roman Reigns. Heel, Braun Strowman, and... Finally, we're going to make a face Seth Rollins. But they cheer everyone but Roman Reigns. They cheer everyone but Roman Reigns. They cheer the crap out of Chris Jericho. The Smarks were, are always going to cheer for Kevin Owens. Braun, just seeing him throw things is exciting. <laughs> Seth Rollins is the man. No pun intended in connection with his catchphrase. <laughs> And, but, I mean, Roman Reigns is Roman Reigns. They're always going to boo Roman Reigns. I've gone on and on and on about my frustration with them continuing to boo Roman Reigns. But I think... Whatever. But, but I think that's the thing. I think, like, I think SmackDown, like you said, I think SmackDown has all of the great things on there. They have great wrestlers. They have a great leader. They have great writers. They have all these and great... And debatable if they have a great leader. Like, no, I, I, I can say that they have a leader that goes like, oh, man, I want to watch this show. But the problem is... I don't think no. I don't think there. I don't think there is a. I don't know what reason there is, as to why no. Why it's still set as the B show. And that's probably just the company setting it as like. There has to be a B show. There has to be a B show, but you can't. But you. I think you can't push this whole. We're gonna compete against each other, and then there be a B show. Cause the B show. You know what you can do with a B show. You can put it on the WWE Network. Like you just go boom. Here's our B show. Well, like, like two hundred five alive. Well, 205. Not 205 Live. 205, NXT. Um, I don't know. It's just like, like the, B, the B show, or the, they're really C shows, but the B shows will be, will be superstars and main event. Like, those are like, those are shows I think like, you just, I don't know. I just can't. It's like, if you want, even if you're going to continuously go SmackDown's the B show, if you want it to at least be a B plus show, um, I think. Survivor, them winning at Survivor Series would definitely give them the attention and the better rate, like a good amount of ratings for the week to go, oh man, I wonder how they're going to take in this win. I wonder, now that you brought, you know, Undertaker into this mess, whether he's going to, whether he's just going to be there until WrestleMania again or not, I'm wondering how he's going to make, how he's going to feel about this and everything like that. I think that's what's going to make SmackDown you know, great. Yes. And Undertaker is actually a very strong part of me going with Team Raw because honestly, think about what is the promised outcome should either of these teams lose. Stephanie says if Team Raw doesn't win, there's going to be consequences. AKA, people are going to get fired or people are going to be made their lives miserable. But all of the last three years have been Stephanie McMahon making people's lives miserable. So it's like, or the more interesting thing is if SmackDown loses, now whoever eats that pinfall has to answer to The Undertaker. Which, if you have AJ Styles, if you have a similar thing, actually going back to that 2005 or 6 Survivor Series, Shawn Michaels was the sole, the sole survivor of Team Raw. And it was like four on one or three on one. And Shawn Michaels eliminates two dudes back to back and then finally loses. It made Shawn Michaels look incredible. They can do the same thing for AJ Styles. Have him be the last one. Or Dean Ambrose. Uh, have him be the last one uh, on the SmackDown side and have him be courageous and fight through. But all it comes down to one on one. And then it's probably going to either be Seth Rollins 
it's, it's Seth Rollins versus AJ or Seth Rollins versus Dean, which either of those are going to be great. But think about the possibility of Undertaker versus AJ Styles. Think about Undertaker versus Dean Ambrose. God, but it's like... Like, come on. It's like, I know what you want. It's like, ah, uh, how dreams could come true there. But I just... I, I, I don't know. I, think I know it's far-fetched. It's far... <laughs> <laughs> fishing. Fishing. Fishing for gold. I can only take Taker being back so serious. Mm -hmm. um, and I want... And, like, I feel that... I feel that this, I don't know, I feel like him, him being involved with the roster, even if, the, it could be just as effective even if they win. I feel like he could still create views. I feel like things could still happen if he is truly coming back. So. Also, please get rid of James Ellsworth. He's got to go. It, it, it ends. On he Martin. must. Him. Him. Rest <laughs> in. Him. Peace. And the shining stars just have to go. They have to go. But they have to go. If if you if you guys have finally realized after so many years that Ryback has to go, you guys have come to turn. <laughs> they didn't down. realize Ryback has to go. Ryback left. No, Ryback. Ryback said some stuff, and they were like, "Okay, now we have to let you go." But I, I was just like, "Come on, Ryback. Come on, come on." Now that brings us to the last match, which, in my opinion shouldn't end the show, but is obviously going to end the show. My opinion shouldn't be happening, but also it's going to be happening. Maybe shouldn't be happening. <laughs> um, and that is Brock. Let no wait, let me try that one more time. Wait, no, oh hold on. Can I can I go into Paul Heyman? Go ahead, Mr. Okay. Is, uh... We have the main event of Survivor Series. We have Goldberg versus the Beast, the Conqueror, the One in what? Twenty three? Twenty? Oh yes, it's twenty three. Twenty three. Twenty three in one. Brock Lesnar with Paul Heyman. And so, can we just say on three what the prediction is for this match? <laughs> can, can we just can we just can we just can we just say it together please? <laughs> One, two, three, Doug just got a face. Double disqualification. No. Double disqualification. Don't you dare. Don't you do it, How about this? How about this? How about this? How about this? WW I totally because trust me. <laughs> Okay, yes, Brock, definitely. Brock is going to win this. Yes. Um, if the problem, they, they just have to be smart with the storyline with this. Like, this is an easy one-on-one and Goldberg going, I have to win again. WrestleMania, let's break, let's break the tie and Goldberg wins. Like, that's so easy. Easy in a sense that, easy as in, I already didn't want this match, but I would buy it. I would be okay with... Royal Rumble, Brock is in there, and then just like Brock did to Goldberg uh, before WrestleMania 20, Goldberg goes and ruins the chance for Brock to win the Royal Rumble. Like, I get it. I'll be fine with that. I will settle with that. But that's the only way this will work. You can't just have Brock win, and then Goldberg goes away. And then Brock, because right now, in my opinion, like, like Paul Hammond said it, like, Brock's done a bunch of things now. And now he is just, um, now this is the only thing that's like holding him back a little bit. Uh, but I think that once he does this, the only thing is for him and Goldberg to have one more match. And I just, I really don't see, like I understand Brock being here is like money making and everything. But like I don't, I don't, unless, unless now they force him like they did before, like they've done numerous times, force him to be in the title picture. I don't see any other reason for Brock to be here, but for the appearance. No, there are, two, there are two, arguably three matches that WWE could potentially do. Well, there are technically four. The match with Shane that I'm pretty sure we're going to get because Shane is insane. Um, we got, you know, Samoa Joe is going to get called up, and a lot of people are like, it's going to be Brock versus Samoa One Joe. Day. One day he'll get called up. One <laughs> <laughs> He's still got to, you know, he's got to have his rematch with Shinsuke. Um, although I'm 
don't really know why they're why they keep waiting for stuff now because they brought Kevin Owens up when he was still champion. That's what I'm saying. Like they brought they brought they get so picky on who they want to bring up and it goes like, oh, come on guys, like yeah, just, just just bring them up. It's okay. Like like listen to the fans. So you, you know, bring Oscar up. Well then bring it a raw. But what other um, the, no see that's we just got to talk about divas. She needs to go to SmackDown. <laughs> No, I'm saying, like, because Raw... No, Raw has an issue with their depth. Mm. Like, okay. SmackDown doesn't have that issue. Because you can see Nikki or Naomi or Natalia or Alexa Bliss or Carmella challenging for the title. Or even Marie. Whenever she decides to return. <laughs> She'll be back one day now. <laughs> Whenever they decide to let her return. <laughs> we're just going to go... Uh, we're going to go with the Brock. Yeah. I think. Like I said, out of the six... There's the one that we agree on. It's going to be... No, now... Uh, no, yeah, that's right. Listo. Listo. That's right, because, you know... So, let's see if this can possibly end in a tie. Because we have these two that were tied. So, we really... One, two, three, four... It could end in a tie. Are you going to change your mind about the, the Miz? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, perfect. So, we thank you all so much thank for you. watching this. Listening to our predictions. Listening to us, you know... Ram on Being about, be, you know, ram on about how we feel and the different opinions we have about everything. We we truly appreciate it. Um, we want you guys to be sure to keep up with us as we have more videos. We have more dates to come with us as well. We have more opinions and more predictions. Oh, to do we? Oh, don't we? Um, and of course, you know, just different topics that we like to bring up. Uh, we're some good, some fun wrestling fans. I can guarantee you that. Um, so yeah, basic. So keep in touch with us. Keep up with us. And we have more videos for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to us. I'm Robbie Miles. I'm TJT. And um, I'm actually going to consider possibly making a title for whoever wins this prediction. A title? Like a, like a belt? Like a belt. So stay tuned for that, possibly. I could be a champion. And the new, the champ is here, is what I'll say. If I win. <laughs> or or I could be champion. No. We'll see. <laughs> Again, Robbie Miles, TJT, thanks for watching guys.